And let's continue on with our discussion on Python classes and objects. And in particular, let's focus on this strange thing known as self. So what the heck is going on in this initialization method with this self reference? So what Python does when you create an object, and I'm just gonna put this in a comment here, is when you create an object, Python very early in the process is going to call the double underscore new method. And the actual object is going to get created there. So in memory, we're gonna create some container for this new data structure we're building. Now after this new method is called and after the container is created, Python is then going to call the initialization method. But the key point here is once we get to the initialization method, the object, this container in memory, has already been created and it already exists. And we need some sort of variable to refer to that object because we're going to want to, in this initialization method, do things with the object. In particular, we're likely going to want to assign variables to the object itself. So the key thing is when we get here, when we get to this line eight, the object is going to have already been created and this variable self is just a variable name that refers to this object in memory. We could call this something else if we wanted to, we could call it, you know, my object or what have you. This is just a variable name. Now this is a very strong convention in Python, so, you know, always call it self, even though you could change it, never do it, always just call it self, but it is just a variable name. So we could get here and we could say, well, let's just print it out. Let's just print out what that looks like when we create objects of this type. Okay, so let's go ahead and execute that. And once again, this is still going to use the debugger. So let's see what happens here. So we'll do this line 10, and we're gonna see that it's actually gonna print out that variable on line five. So we're gonna create an instance of this object, and you can see when it got here that it actually did create out, you know, print out that reference to the variable. Okay, so that's fine. The self name is just a variable name that is referring to this container that's already been created in memory. Now, what would we more typically do with that? So let's say we wanted to pass in other arguments when we're creating this network device. In particular, let's say we wanted to pass in an IP address. So we'll pass in a platform and we'll pass in an IP address. Now this, these arguments behave just like function arguments with the, with the caveat that the first argument is always a reference to the object, to that container in memory. So when we add other arguments, when we go down here to where we create our network device objects, we're then going to need to pass in arguments down here. So we could say platform equals, we'll call this Cisco IOS, and we'll call, say, IP address equals some IP address. So we'll pass in the platform and we'll pass in the IP address. Now the rules for passing in arguments behave exactly the same way as the rules for passing in arguments to functions do, with the, with the caveat, as I've mentioned, that this first argument is always this implicit self argument. So you notice down here that I'm only passing in two arguments. I'm not passing in ar any argument to the object. That is known and already implied. But after I get past that initial reference to the object itself, then the other rules for argument passing apply, just like for functions. So here we're passing in named arguments. So I am explicitly stating the name. So this is going to go, this Cisco IOS string is going to be bound to platform. This IP address string is going to be bound to IP address. 
if I passed in positional arguments, so if I just did it based on position, then it would just map left to right. And so Cisco IOS being the first one on the left would map to platform. The IP address would be the second one would map to this string here would map to IP address. And then just like functions, I can also mix and match um, both positional and named arguments with the caveat that the positional arguments have to come first. So I could do something like this and have my positional arguments first and then my follow up named arguments. And just like functions, I could also have, you know, some other argument that had a default value. Like I could have in my method definition there, I could have some other arguments that had a default value like username equals admin. And then when I'm calling instances, when I'm creating instances of that object, this argument would then be optional. If you don't specify it, it's going to use the default. If you do specify it, it's going to use what you specify. Now, let's move our breakpoint and move it inside the method. So here we're going to create an instance of network device. We're going to pass in two arguments. This Cisco IOS string is going to get bound to the platform variable. This 1.1.1.1, sorry Cloudflare, is going to get bound to the IP underscore ADDR uh, argument. So inside this init, we're going to have these variables that we pass in available to us. And let's look at that in the Python debugger. So we'll go ahead and execute that, do our listing. We can see where we're at in our code. And I'm going to actually list all the lines of the code that we can see we're at this point. So now if I print out self, the variable named self, it's going to show me the object. If I print out the variable named platform, it's going to show that string that we passed in, the Cisco IOS string. And if I show the variable named IP underscore ADDR, it's going to show that IP address um, that we passed in that string. Now, one thing that we typically do here in our code is we actually assign the variables we pass in to the object. So here we're passing in two variables, platform and IP. And what we would typically do is we'd say self.platform, and this is going to create an attribute. So when we do this dot of this form, this is going to create an attribute of this name platform. And we're going to actually assign the variable platform to that. And then here we're going to do self.ip underscore ADDR equals the IP address variable. So now if we look at this code, and I know this is a little bit confusing because we have two references to platform, this is the attribute name. We could call this whatever we wanted. So we didn't have to make it identical, but here we chose it to make it identical to the variable name. Obviously it's a little bit more understandable when you say the argument we pass in with this name, platform, this is just a variable called platform, we're going to bind that argument with the exact same name to the object. So we're going to say self.platform equals that thing that we passed in. And then we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to make a, an attribute IP underscore ADDR. And we're going to assign the variable that we passed in, you know, to that. The IP address variable that we passed in, we're going to assign it to that attribute. So what's going to happen at the end of this is that container in memory, that object in memory, is going to have these two variables that we passed in earlier actually bound to the object. So the implication of that is when we're done with this process, with this creation process of the object, when we get down here and we say router1.platform, when we do that attribute access, it's actually going to return this string. Similarly, router1.ip underscore ADDR is going to return this string. So this is a very frequent pattern in the initialization method and that we very frequently basically bind all these arguments that we passed in. So these are just variables that we passed in.
we actually bind those to the object itself and then potentially we do something inside the initialization method or potentially we just do the binding and then we leave the do other things to later method calls which we're going to talk about in other subsequent videos so now let's move our set trace back here and let's rerun that code and let's look at this b behavior okay i'm going to just add another line let's go ahead and run that okay we'll go ahead and execute that line 10 we'll look at our code so now let's look at router one it isn't it is an instance of the network device class we have in fact created that object we can then do router one dot platform we can see that the Cisco iOS or the router one dot platform attribute returns this string this is the string that we passed in here came in on this variable named platform and then we bound it to the object on that line five similarly router one dot IP underscore ADDR equals that IP address that we passed in so we're going through this process of initializing our um, our object you know and we're defining the blueprint for how we want this initialization to work what are the names of these arguments that we pass in and then inside the initialization method what do we do with those arguments in this case we're just binding them to the object itself